All right, on to part f. What's it asking us? Use the fact that sine x is greater than or equal to 2 on pi times x in this particular domain to show that this particular inequality is true. So you can see we're relating bn to this unusual looking integral here. How do we do this? Well, I'm going to start with this particular inequality here. And they don't tell you that you need to prove this, but it's actually very straightforward to see what it's talking about and why. Um, sine x, we know what that looks like. If I just draw myself a very quick and dirty sketch over here, good old sine x like so. When you think about 2 on pi x, this is a straight line, goes to the origin, and it's got a gradient of 2 on pi. Now, in the particular domain that we're thinking about, x equals pi on 2 is a specific point for this particular line because when you substitute in uh, pi on 2 here, you get 2 over pi times pi over 2, so you get 1, right? What does that mean? What's the significance of that? Well, at pi on 2, let's use this, the scale is awful, but that's okay. Um, at pi on 2, you're going to be going through exactly 1, which is in fact the top of that graph there, right? There's 1. So when you compare sine x with the straight line 2 on pi, X. Uh, here's that straight line, 2 on pi x, and you can see, sure enough, sine x is greater than or equal to that straight line. I mean, here's the rest of it, you know, it goes over here and over here. But in this little domain, you know, sine is always higher, okay? Not that you needed to prove that, but we're going to use that as our kind of launch pad for proving this inequality, okay? The other piece of information that's helpful to know is that when you compare this particular integral, I mentioned this strange integral over here, right? We're comparing it to bn, and you can see there's some similarities and differences, right? The similarities are, you've got this term, I use purple, this term out the front here in the integrand, the x squared, that's in regular old bn, and then you also have this power of n, right? So what's usually there for bn is that you would normally expect that there's a cos 2, or rather a cos squared x in there, right? Because when you raise that to the power of n, that'll give you the cos to the 2n x that we've been working with for so long throughout this question. But instead, we don't see that, we see this. So clearly, whatever has been replaced by it, like this thing, uh, this thing here, the cos squared, is equal whereas this thing here must be less than or equal to. So that's what we're going to try and show. As I mentioned before, let's just begin with this result here, this inequality. And what I'm going to start off by doing is, you can see I've, I want to get towards a cos squared. I've got a sine, so the most obvious direct way to do that, as we've already done a couple of times in these earlier parts, is via the Pythagorean identity. I'm going to square both sines. Now, you have to be careful with doing that because with an equation, you're fine doing pretty much any operation to the left and right hand sides simultaneously. But with inequalities, you have to be cautious, right? If I'm going to square the right hand side, which gives me 2 on pi x all squared, this would not be true. I would violate this inequality if the left and the right hand sides, if I had like a negative positive relationship going on, um, that was going to ruin this. So just as a quick example, right? I could say that one is greater than or equal to negative three, right? But if you square both sides, you'd get one on the left hand side and nine on the right hand side, and you're in trouble because that is no longer true, right? The reason I can say it in this case is because um, I don't have the particular quality that this inequality over here has that breaks my ability to square both sides, namely this negative and this positive, right? Both of the things I'm dealing with in the given domain are positive, so I should invoke that, I should state it as my reason for why this is a legitimate operation, okay? So I'm gonna say I can do this since uh, sine x is non-negative and 2 on pi x is also non-negative for this particular domain from naught to pi on 2. I almost instinctively said 2 pi. <laughs> okay, so fantastic. We've got that stated. So how do I take this and then transform it to something which I can relate to, uh, to this question up here, okay? Well, what I'm going to do is I've got a sine squared, so I want to get towards a cos squared, right? And that's going to sort of get me to here, which will get me up into this result. So if I want to get cos squared, I've got my sine squared already. Um, I'm going to use 1 minus sine squared. So let's do this one step at a time, just not to miss things, right? To get a 1 minus sine squared, I need to multiply both sides by minus 1, like so. Oops, don't write that. I'll write multiply that by minus 1 as well, but multiplying both sides of an inequality by minus 1 is going to reverse the direction of the inequality. So I've switched that around, just be careful for it. And then at the same time, I actually don't want minus sine squared, I want 1 minus sine squared, so I might as well add 1 to both sides while I'm at it. 
And of course the adding one doesn't change anything about the direction of the inequality. So that looks good. That allows me to replace this left hand side with cos squared. Um, and I've got on the right hand side, and this should look familiar, right? When you square it out, that uh, 2 squared becomes a 4, there's a pi squared on the denominator, and then there's an x squared, right? So this is looking really promising because if you go back to the original question, this is the term uh, over here that you can see inside the brackets being raised to the power of n. So again, why don't I just keep on going through that, right? I'm going to raise both sides to the power of n. That'll give me cos to the 2n uh, x is less than or equal to 1 minus 4 on pi squared x squared. And by the way, you know, we've also got qualities about n that make this a legitimate thing to say to the power of n. Um, I'm not doing any like weirdo square roots, cube roots, that kind of thing. And then from here, um, in order to get to the result I'm required to prove, I really just need to perform this integration, right? And just to be a little bit cautious with this, because just like with things like, you know, squaring both sides or multiplying by a negative, those kinds of things, um, you actually have to state why you're allowed to do the things that you're doing and that it doesn't violate the direction of the inequality, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the integral from naught to pi on 2 of not just what's on the left hand side and the right hand side but x squared times what's on the left hand side and the right hand side like so. So there's the first bit and I'm going to claim that doing this um, to both sides preserves the direction of, oh it's not that, doing the right left hand side there, just grab this and be lazy, that like so, and that's with respect to x. I claim that this is true, and the reason I can do this is because, much like I did here, right, over this situation, looking at this particular domain and looking at the operation, from 0 to pi on 2, what I'm going to be multiplying by, like this is a signed area, right, integrals tell you signed area, but thankfully x squared is above the axis, so therefore it's not going to muck about with my positive negative thing here, which would normally be an issue. So I'm going to say, this is true um, since Daisy, since x squared is greater than or equal to zero. I don't even need to attach a domain to that because that's true for all real values of x. And if you have a look, what have I done? On the left hand side, I have bn, and on the right hand side, I have everything that I needed. So I can say that's all true as required. Okay, so you're going to see these last few points here, like if you have a look at the working, ah, oh, part f wasn't so arduous, that's why it was just one mark, and we're going to continue this trend towards the end of the question. So, here comes part g.